My name is Billy, and this is Axel. He's uh, getting ready to be a two-year-old uh, Belgian Malinois. I've had Axel since he was eight weeks old. I grew up with German Shepherds. Um, my first one my uncle brought from Germany um, when I was a kid, when I was a baby, actually. Um, so I grew up with German Shepherds, and I decided that I didn't want the shedding that you get from German Shepherds. So when I decided to go with another uh, canine, I decided uh, to go with the Belgian Malinois because it was next closest thing to a German Shepherd without the shedding. So with Axel, <clears throat> he has like two periods that he sheds, seasonal periods that he sheds, um, which I notice, of course, when he's taking a shower. But um, other than that, there's you know very little shedding that comes from the Belgian male. So he's a high energy dog. Um, outside of when he's sleeping, um, if you don't have the energy and the stamina, this is not going to be the dog for you. Um, and one of the reasons that I decided to go with a high energy dog um, was because I'm 52. So I said, well, in order to keep me moving. Then if I got a higher energy dog, I wouldn't have much of an option. Uh, so it forces me to exercise. Um, taking him out for walks, you know, two or three times a day um, forces me to get my exercise as well. We go to the park, we throw the ball, we go to the beach, we throw the ball. And so uh, he loves to swim, he loves the water. So um, his two main sources of exercise is just running, chasing the ball. Um, we do go to a dog park in Galveston because it has different agility, um, has ramps, it has tunnels, and he likes the agility aspects of, of that particular park th that it has to offer. Ready? There you go. Ready? Okay. All right. Ready? Go get it. His relaxation really comes after he comes back in and takes a shower. So when we come back from the beach, we go straight in the shower for the most part. And, and just like, you know, humans, once you have that shower and you feel relaxed, once he comes out the shower, he'll go to his bed and that's it, he's done. So well, he, he's done for about a couple of hours <laughs> and then that's about it. So unless, if it's nighttime, then he's done. If it's daylight, then you know, shortly afterwards, he's ready to go again. What's his personality when you meet strangers? Um, it varies. I mean, he seems to pick up on certain individuals. He's relaxed. And then there's certain individuals he just don't like. A few of the folks from the coffee shop that I have coffee with in the mornings. And he, um, some of them he takes to. Some of them he don't particularly care for. I, after, you know, I met Mark, where every canine, um, we discussed training and, um, and you know, we got comfortable with each other and, and I decided to send Axel um, to, to every canine for training. And, um, you know, I did a great job with him. So they, they kept him for over a month. I think it was a month or a little longer because um, we did, you know, a few extra things outside of the basic, uh, the basic commands, the basic training. And, um, so this is the product, spoiled product that I got back. He doesn't eat dog food. When he came from Mexico, he was in Mexico, he was bred in Mexico, and um, I brought him from Mexico. So as, you know, that, that first few regular feedings, they had him on dry dog food. So when I got him, they sent very little, little small bag that they was feeding him. And that was at eight weeks. And he's never seen dog, regular dog food since. He eats the same food that I do outside of seasoning, but he eats vegetables and he eats meat from the, the organ meat, which, you know, the heart and the kidney, the liver to get a good protein. He has a ground beef added to it in order to give him that fat content that he doesn't get from the organ meat because it's totally lean. Add a little bit of, you know, coconut oil sometimes to his food, but he just eats regular food. So with the carrots, the sweet potatoes, the peas, the broccoli. I used to do cauliflower, but it's really no nutritional value to it. 
So we strict stick more to, to broccoli. You know, I've had dogs before and I know that, you know, even though in the past I've tried feeding the best um, dog food, you know, which has gotten expensive. But with that, you know, you hear a lot of people complain about, you know, allergies and this dog doesn't go to the vet. You know, he has he hasn't had a need to go to the vet. You know, he eats fresh food, not the dyes that are in dog food. If I don't eat it, you know, he doesn't eat it. His food changes. I mean, we, we will do okra and, and we'll do peas. And uh, so it varies. His diet changes every couple of weeks or so. I got to give me a bowl of uh, a bag of bones uh, because he has a bone marrow in it. He loves chewing the bone. This is the Alberto who's got the meat who's oh, right in the snow. He's the butcher Alberto. <laughs> he's the butcher Alberto. I mean, he's the butcher today. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. But when, when he's not here, you run everything. Yes. <laughs> you just... <laughs> my, my cat. The, I have a big one. He's here. I appreciate it. Um, give me, what's this, two pounds? Yeah. Yeah. Give, me, uh, give me two more. Two more? Yeah. They're all two pounds, about two pounds each. Yeah. Give me six pounds. Power, did you see that, Louis? Thanks, brother. Yeah. So I come here. You had a puppy? They ground up everything fresh. Ah. Bill? It's not sitting in the store for every puppy. You have a puppy? Yes. It was he's two, almost two now. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So two puppies. No, mm -hmm. one puppy, two oh. two years old. Oh, two years old. Two years old. Yeah. He's a big now. Almost. <laughs> All right guys, appreciate it. Thank you all. Yeah, you next time. All right. What's the most difficult thing about about Axel? Only Axel or only the Malawi? Um, time. It's like owning a, a three year old. Um it's like having a three-year-old forever. Um, there's is, is constant energy. You have to watch him because he is uh, a three-year-old, literally. Like if I turn on the shower and um, open the door, he'll be in the shower before I get to the bathroom. And so if I don't let him in, what he does is he'll come and take the clothes off the sofa, put them on the floor. And so, I mean, he doesn't do anything with them, but when I come out the shower and there's clothes on the floor that wasn't there when I went in the shower, that's his little way of saying, here, I'm pissed because you didn't take me in the shower with. The key thing with, you know, these dogs is if you don't have time to pay them attention, don't leave them alone because it's gonna bite you because they're gonna let you know that you're not paying them attention. You can give somebody some tips on owning a Malawi, what would you say? Don't own one if you're not ready for it. If, if you've had a baby and you know what that two to three year old stage is and you're done with it, don't get this dog. <laughs> so um, that's that's the key. The key is, is time and energy. If you work, you know, fortunately I, I control my own schedule, I work for myself. so. If you work a 12 hour job, this is not the dog for you. Even if you work an eight hour job that you're not home with that dog and that dog is either in a kennel, you know, or somewhere else and you don't have time to give the dog attention, this is not the dog for you.